Hi, and welcome to the Insights from Dr. Intimacy YouTube webcast. This is your host, Prophetess Lenin Hanaya, a.k.a. Dr. Intimacy, and I will be giving you an enlightening look into the naked truth about sex, relationships, and intimacy from a spirit, soul, body perspective. And this is session eight in the series that I've been doing on Incubus and Succubus. And I just actually, I think I, I may call this uh, a session 7B because <laughs> I just finished with session 7 and I really didn't cover what I wanted to. So I'm going to post these back to back. So let's call this segment uh, 7B or part 2 of, of part 7. But um, I was talking about the different open doors and there were 13 doors that I talked about. And uh, I talked about those in segment 6. And it actually got cut off. The video was distorted at the end. And so I didn't actually get to share about that 13th open door, which is spiritual warfare. So I'm going to pick up right there so we don't run out on time. Um, that 13th door, and this one was really important for people that maybe don't have any obvious doors of sexual if i name those other 12 doors the fornication the masturbation the bitterness unforgiveness sexual abuse emotional abuse um pornography witchcraft all of those doors that i just uh named emotional wounds soul ties carnality fear and you don't have any of those doors that you know of nothing that you can see um this might be the door for you this spiritual warfare especially if you are an intercessor or if you are a if you are a ministry leader um and remember that these spirits take advantage of weakness these are spiritual bullies they take advantage of your weaknesses because when you are weak you're not able to fight with the same fervor um you're not as resistant to attacks when you are weak. Uh, I know me personally, I mean, I have gotten to places in my life where I didn't even want to fight anymore. I just laid down and said, go ahead, just beat me. Uh, you know, in a spiritual sense, you know, the warfare can become so intense sometimes when you're in leadership, um, dealing with a difficult topic and maybe you don't have the support around you that is really undergirding, undergirding you and it can be very intense and there have been times when I just didn't want to fight anymore and these spirits will really take advantage of the weakness that can occur during spiritual warfare so if you're interceding if you're counseling if you're preaching if you're involved in deliverance ministry missions uh, missionary work evangelism any type of ministry work at all um, is going to require some level of spiritual warfare which is going to weaken you and these spirits will take advantage of that and so it can be really perplexing when you are living um, what you think is a is an upright life and you're praying and, and you're living a consecrated life and you don't have any obvious open doors in your life and you're still being afflicted by these spirits it can be really perplexing and um, and you may not understand, and it can be very discouraging, like the letter that I read from Trevor in the first part of this segment. But spiritual warfare weakens you, and it is so important that you are thoroughly replenished after you engage in spiritual warfare. So after you engage in intercession, after you preach, um, after you minister, after you counsel, after you pray for somebody, it is really important that you refresh yourself. Go into the Word and study for yourself. Encourage yourself. Build yourself up. Pray for yourself. Spend lots of time in praise and worship. That is your best weapon. I'm telling you, praise and worship and thanksgiving is really, really going to re replenish you and refresh you. And make sure you're getting some rest. You need to actually rest your physical body. Spiritual warfare is actually very strenuous on the physical body. Um, a lot of times the physical body emulates a lot of that warfare that is going on in the spirit. So it's important that that you know some practical things have to be looked into. You need to make sure that you're getting rest, keeping your body clean, 
uh, and also eating a healthy diet. Make sure you're drinking enough water and, and getting the right kind of food in your body. And I know that may sound a little crazy because everything that I've been talking about has been so spiritual, but those things do affect your spirit. When your physical body is weak, it can affect your spirit because it drains you. We're a triune being. We are spirit, soul, and body, and all three are connected. And as long as we continue to live on this earth, all three will always be connected. So if your spirit is weak, it can affect your body. If your body is weak, it can affect your spirit. So take care of this physical body too, because not taking care of your physical body can weaken you spiritually. And that can become an open door for sex demons to afflict you, believe it or not. So that might be a big clue to somebody right now that is watching this and says, wow, that's what it is with me. I tried everything else. I closed all the other doors. There's no obvious uh, open sin in my life, sexual sin, and I couldn't figure it out. Well, this might be the thing for you. Just making sure that you are not over uh, exerting yourself and that you are, even Yeshua, you know, when he ministered, he went away into the mountains to pray by himself. When the, when the apostles were going crazy about the storm while they were on the boat, he was on the boat resting. So, so Jesus, Yeshua, he knew how to make sure that he replenished himself both spiritually and physically. And you need to do the same if you're going to stay strong enough to stay in this fight and to resist the, the demonic attacks that the enemy will send to destroy you. And we know what these spirits want to do. So um, those are all the open doors. Now, what I want to talk about now, what I'd like to get into now is the dangers of these spirits. You know, just recently I had somebody write me <clears throat> on YouTube in response to one of the videos and and uh, I don't remember the, the verbatim comment, but um, I think you can look at it. It's on the part one. But she says, I don't have a problem with these spirits. She says, I have a, a sex demon and we get along rather well. He makes me feel great. And she was actually implying that she enjoys her sex demon. And I don't think that she was too pleased with my negative depiction of these spirits because she's enjoying her relationship with with what she called her sex demon as a matter of fact I believe her words were it was as if she conjured him up especially for her in other words he was custom tailored for her he understands all of her needs makes her feel great and that was really sad to me I've actually heard uh, had other people make similar comments that uh, there are some people that really enjoy engaging with these demons and they are not aware of the seriousness of the matter and so i want to just remind you these are demonic spirits the scripture says that the enemy comes for one purpose and one purpose only and that is to steal to kill and destroy to steal to kill and destroy to steal to kill and destroy. That is all these spirits are coming from. And sin may be pleasurable for a season. Yes, you are going to experience some mind-blowing physical ecstasy a lot of times with these demons. They're very skillful at that. And that can be very addictive because it feels so good. But it is so detrimental. The consequences are so severe. You can't take this lightly. This is something that you have to take very, very serious because your purpose and your life is at stake. And I want to recap on, you know, we talked about the uh, these spirits impregnating you. I think we talked about that in segment two or three. What is their purpose? Why do they come? They come to impregnate you. So let's talk again about what they're impregnating you with. There are four things that they want to impregnate you with. They want to impregnate you with fear, which is going to pervert your faith. We talked about that. They want to rob you of your faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible 
for you to believe. If it is impossible for you to believe, it is impossible for you to achieve. And that means that your life is going to be full of failure. That young lady that wrote me and, and talked about how much she likes her sex demon. I, I wonder what her life is like right now. I wonder what kind of mishaps and and um, and disappointments she's experiencing just in terms of financial failure and health failure and relationship failure because these spirits bring failure into your life by perverting your ability to believe. Um, they want to impregnate you with lust which will cause you to desire evil things to satisfy and fulfill your soul. So they want to impregnate you with lust. These are four things they're coming to impregnate you with. This is the danger of these spirits. They're going to impregnate you with a strong desire for evil things. They're going to make you desire evil fulfillment, or they're going to cause you to desire to go out and anxiously fulfill in evil ways, even legitimate needs and desires, and you're going to justify it by saying, well, I need this. Everybody needs this. This is natural. Um, and that's, that's what these spirits are doing. You know, they are perverting uh, and warping your understanding of right and wrong. Then they want to impregnate you with different spirits of perversion. Uh, another thing that they impregnate you with are other demonic spirits. That they are carriers of other spirits. These demons carry the seed of other spirits. So, from uh, from the incubus spirit, you may now be impregnated with a a, a spirit of addiction, a spirit of witchcraft, a spirit of psychosis. A spirit we already talked about fear, um, many different spirit of gluttony, uh, spirit of depression, spirit of suicide, and so they're coming to pervert you with other types of spirits. But one of their favorite things to do in terms of impregnating you with other spirits are other spirits of sexual perversion, masturbation, homosexuality, incest, pornography, pedophilia. Uh, and the reason that they want to do that is because they would like for you to engage in illicit acts of sexual activity with other people so you can spread their seed. They would like for you to connect sexually with other people because demons are transferable. I wrote a book called STD, Sexually Transmitted Demons. You need to read that book. Demons can be transmitted just like a chlamydia or a gonorrhea. They can be transmitted transferred through sex. And so these spirits like to impregnate you with other spirits of sexual perversion in hopes that you'll go out and seek the fulfillment of sexual temptation and then spread spread their seed, uh, reproduce. Remember, everything's about reproduction, reproducing after their own kind. Um, and then the fourth thing that they want to impregnate you with is rebellion. They want to impregnate you with rebellion and lead you into witchcraft. Why? Why? <laughs> because that is the way that they can ultimately separate you from God eternally. So they're going to impregnate you with spirits of rebellion and witchcraft, uh, which will start off with subtle forms of witchcraft like um, uh, superstitions, manipulation for good reasons, horoscopes which is going to escalate into things like palm reading, communicating with the stars, good luck charms. And next thing you know, it'll be full-fledged Satanism, calling on demons, uh, seances, communicating with the dead. And from there, you know, people often sell their souls out. They denounce the Lord and they are eternally damned. Uh, remember, ultimately, Ultimately, the assignment of every demon is to completely disconnect you from Yahweh God, your creator, and see you eternally damned. Okay, so when we're talking about the danger of these spirits, ultimately, they want to completely separate you from your creator and see you eternally damned. So they are very dangerous, nothing to play with, nothing to enjoy. You need to get delivered, completely delivered from these lust 
demons. And that is what I'm going to be talking about in the next session. This segment is over. I thank you for joining me, but please, please tune in in the next segment. And we're really going to be digging into how do you get delivered now from these spirits. This is Dr. Intimacy, and thanks again for joining.